Hello everybody, I'll talk today with you about city artifacts. Basic physics of city artifacts, okay? Uh, let us, let me talk with you at first, what's the meaning of artifacts? Artifacts mean that the image not clear. The image that there is something causing distortion of the image, causing bad information to the image. Okay, the image of city, which is composed of pixels, okay, this pixel contain informations. This pixel contain information about the image. Any error in the registration of the information, any error in registration of the information causing the artifacts, okay? To clarify this for you, Okay, <coughs> this is our x-ray tube, okay, and this is our patient, and this is detectors, which detect the photons transmitted from the patient to form, finally, the image of CT, or CT image, okay. This image is composed of rows and columns. Which is called matrix. Okay? Rows and columns. Okay? Each pixel or each square is called pixel. And if we talk about three dimension so this is called voxel okay so now each pixel contain information about the image of patient each pixel here contain information about the image of patient okay here the patient is composed of bone water fat and so on maybe you find air as well okay each component of patients absorbs the radiation and transmit amount of radiation okay the intensity of some transmitted photons depends on the density of the component the density of organ itself okay so you will find that bone, the transmitted photons from bone is very low because bone has higher density, so absorb a lot of radiation. But air, the intensity transmitted from air is very high. So the detector which are collecting the information or the transmitted photons coming from air or bone will translate this intensity to a gray value to value or to gray scale as a color okay you will find that bone finally appear as bright but air appear as dark so, each component or each organ or each material inside the patient has a specific attenuation coefficient. Has a specific attenuation coefficient. Okay? For bone, the attenuation coefficient for bone is higher than the attenuation coefficient of air. So, the transmitted photons from bone will be less than the transmitted photons from air okay so as such city number city number which represent the difference in attenuation between 
all components between each components or each organ or each material inside our bodies and water. So we will represent the signal or the transmitted photons from the organ by CT number or Hounsfield unit. Hounsfield unit, which is calculated by the difference in attenuation of tissue minus the attenuation of water divided by the attenuation of tissue itself. Okay, we will take the water as a reference material for us. Okay, the CT number, CT number of water is when we substitute here tissue here will be water so the attenuation of water minus the attenuation of water will be the same value so will be equal zero so the at CT number or Hounsfield unit of water zero so the CT number or attenuation coefficient or the Hounsfield unit of water will be zero this is our reference number okay so, according to this equation, we calculate CT number for all materials inside our bodies. Okay, so we calculate CT number for fat or water or bone or air and so on. Okay, each component inside our bodies or each material inside our bodies, okay, has a different CT number. Okay, so after that, after we calculate the city number, we register the city number in this pixel. Okay, you will find on registration, we register the city number. The highest city number, highest city number is bright. And lowest city number is dark. Okay, so I have a range of city numbers, okay? I have a range of city numbers range start from this range of, of city numbers from here black or dark and the other end is white or bright okay so now for bone will appear as bright signal for bone appear as bright signal because bone has higher CT number but for air so this is the region of bone which appear as bright signal but bone but uh, for air appear as black okay because has low CT number okay according to this equation <coughs> so we register the image the pixel will find this pixel is black and another pixel is white and so on we have different city numbers so different gray values so different gray values from white to black okay so different degrees so when you see is an image of city any image of city like this one here you will find the bone bright or white you will find soft tissue gray you will find the air is black. You will find here the liver is gray. And fat here is about to be black. Okay, but so different gray values, different gray values according to the CT number values for each component. Now we know together how to calculate the CT number for each component or each organ of the material. Any variation, any variation of CT numbers inside the image causing artifacts any variation from the true value if the true value for bone is the for city number is 1000 and we collect the information in minus 1000 so there is a variation from the true value so when registration on registration the image on registration the image we will get different signal or different gray value not real not real one like here you see this metal this metal causing metal artifacts in the rail okay soft tissue here appear as 
white and dark strips strikes you see white and dark strikes okay these strikes okay white and dark caused by this metal this is clips for aneurysm okay caused white and and dark strikes okay so but in real the image like this this is a metal but here the artifact is already is corrected so the soft tissue around it okay appear as as gray value as the real value normal value okay so this is a variation but what's the cause of this variation the presence of metal okay what is the reason of this variation or, or what is the reason of this artifact the reason is the presence of metal the metal itself here you will find another type of artifact it's called ring artifact you will find here the ring this is rings you see okay we have a reason for this artifact as well and here this is a motion Bush, patient is moving during the scan so you will find the image here okay the borders here not not uh, not correctly registered so the difference great variation from the true value of city number okay and here this is called beam hardening artifact okay this some examples of artifacts in CT. Today we will talk about the main cause or the basic physics of these artifacts. The basic physics of these artifacts, okay? Today we will know together how the metal causing white and dark stri strikes, how these ring artifacts appear, how these beam hardening artifacts, how motion of patient causing these artifacts, okay? There are four sources of artifacts in CT. Physics-based, patient properties, scanner-based, and helical and mouth slice artifacts. That means that we have source of artifacts which is related to the physics, and another art source artifact, source of artifact is related to the patient himself, and artifacts because of the scanner itself the machine itself maybe error or damage or detector problem causing these artifacts or the helical and multi size artifacts due to the reconstruction artifacts when the machine reconstructs the image maybe you adjust the parameters in wrong way that causing artifacts in the image so we have four sources of artifacts. Artifacts related to the physics, that mean related to the radiation itself. The X-ray, the X-ray which is coming out from the X-ray tube, and artifacts are related to the patient, like patient motion, okay, or patient metal. Sometimes you find patients can patient with metal inside his body, okay, this metal causing artifacts, okay, and scanner based scanner based that mean wrong or problem in the machine itself in the detector array maybe okay causing this artifact or in the reconstruction uh, artifact or the construction level okay we will talk about the physics based artifacts okay physics based artifacts artifacts result from the physical processes involved in the acquisition of city data here we are talking about the acquisition not processing okay during the acquisition maybe we will find this artifact but this artifact is called beam hardening artifact beam hardening artifact beam hardening that means that okay I'll clear now all this to talk about the beam hardening artifacts do you remember this care from last session? What's this curve? Energy and intensity. Okay, is it, what's the spectrum? The spectrum represents what? Okay, X-ray spectrum, yes? This is X-ray spectrum. 
Okay, that's fine. This is X-ray spectrum, okay? We talked before about that we uh, that this spectrum is polyenergetic or monoenergetic. This spectrum has single energy or many energies? Many energies, polyenergetics. Okay, starting from here to this is the energy is KVB. We are used if we used 120 KV. So the maximum energy of X-ray photon here, we have different, this all these energies, different energies, okay, for X-ray. Not one energy, but characteristic X-ray, single energy, a single energy. So now, if we used 120 keV, okay, and this is the photons, the photons start from 20 till 120 keV. So we have a range of energies, okay? So the photons now coming from the X-ray tube, 20, 30, 50, till 120. Okay, 80. Okay. So we have some photons, low energy photons, and another photons, higher energy photons okay when these photons when these photons incident on high density material high raw material or high density material what will happen what's your expectation in this situation now i have a range of photons from low energy to high energy and this is spectrum or this range of energies okay incident now on the high density material the high density material will absorb low energies or high energies photons which easier to be absorbed low energy photons or high energy photons low energy photons high energy photons has higher penetration power but low energy photon has less penetration less energy so it's easy to be absorbed by high density material okay so the low energy photons will be absorbed by the material but the higher energy photons will be transmitted okay well transmit so 20 and 30 energies will be absorbed but 50 or 80 or 90 and 120 20 will be well transmit from the high density material okay so now if i want to draw another spectrum for the photons transmitted from the high density material what do you expect the the shape of this spectrum if i want to draw the spectrum of the new energies here the spectrum will be like this the the the, the start of the spectrum will be different here we start at 50 not 20 at the first spectrum we start at 20 but this one start at 50 because the low energy already absorbed okay so we will start here okay 50 so the intensity of photons here less than the intensity of photon after the high density material is less than the intensity of photon before the high density material okay so the spectrum will not be high like this one but will be less okay so the intensity of the beam hardening after the beam hardening okay will be less than the first before the beam hardening okay this is what's happening here is be is called beam hardening beam hardening means that high density material absorb low energies of photons and the high energy photons only high energy photons transmit from the high density material okay okay so now the spectrum now is different you will find that the spectrum move to the right side you will find that now the spectrum is moved to the right side 
So the peak here, the peak of this curve, of the second curve, represent the mean energy or the average energy of photons. Okay, now the mean energy for between 50 and 120, okay, not like the mean energy between 20 and 120. The average energy between 20 and 120 is around 60. It's around 60, okay? But the mean energy between 50 and 120 is around 85, okay? 85 or 90, okay? So the average energy, what happened to the curve? The average energy is be becomes higher, becomes higher. So the average energy after beam hardening become higher. Okay. So here, this represent this peak represents the average energy, which is here, maybe at 60. But here, the average energy for the second beam after beam hardening will be at 90 or 85. So, so beam hardening causing causing the energy the average energy becomes higher that mean increasing the penetration of the x-ray okay that means the average energy for the second beam here higher so causing higher penetration causing higher penetration causing higher penetration because higher energy x-ray Penetrate has higher penetration than low energy X-ray. So the second spectrum here has higher energy. But the first spectrum here has mean energy less than the second one. So this higher energy peak when when absorbed by when absorbed by the detectors Okay, so now the detector will detect the higher energy coming from the metal. Okay, higher energy, that means the detector will represent it as dark, higher intensity, higher energy, X-ray, will represent it as a dark or bright. You remember the air, the energy, energy transmitted from air is high energy so it's represented by black okay or dark image okay the same situation here due to or because of the beam hardening okay the detector will fail will be confused to translate or to give or to get the real value of attenuation Okay, this phenomena or this this happen in any metal inside the patient. Inside the patient, when the X-ray coming from outside, this is the patient brain. Okay, and the X-ray coming from outside and met and the incident on the metal like clips in aneurysm. Okay, these clips causing what? causing absorption of low energy and high energy photons transmitted. These high energy photons which are transmitted will be collected by detectors. And the detector will represent it as black. But it's not real. It is not real. <coughs> the detector will represent it or will translate it to black color, but it's in the real as white color because it's coming from metal that's the reason why you will find here this one this black color this dark or black strikes black strikes due to or because of beam hardening Okay, so now we understand why these black strikes appear in the image. But 
another question. Now we see in this image black strikes and white strikes as well. You see these white strikes here? You can see it? Why white strikes? We see here black strikes. Now we understand well that these black strikes is because of beam hardening artifacts or beam hardening of the X-ray beam. But white strikes, why? Why appear? Why these white strikes appear in the image? White strikes means higher signal or low signal? High density. That means that the detector here failed to translate it, yes? That means that dark, dark here means that high energy detected by the detectors. But white strikes here means that low energy or low energy of photons detected in this region, in these points of pixel. This image is composed of pixel, you remember? And this pixel here collect higher energy. So it is represented by black color. But this pixel appear as pride, like bone. So low energy coming to this point. Low energy coming to this point. Okay? But why? Because of photon starvation. Photon starvation. That means here Here, the number of photons, number of photons, after the beam hardening, after the metal, less than the number of photon before the metal. Here, what about the number? If we can compare between the number of photons after the metal and number of photon before the metal, which one is greater? Which one is high? First one. First one. So, number of photons here. N1 number so number of photons before the metal is higher than number of photons after the metal okay so that means this number of photons will not be enough to give accurate information will not be enough so will make something like noise will not enough to be detected by the detector that's the reason why we see white strikes, white strikes. So, due to it's called photon starvation. It's called photon starvation, okay? As you starve, the detector is starve, starving, okay? Starved, why? Because it has not enough food. So, the same situation, it has not enough photons to get accurate signal, to get accurate image, to get accurate CT number for this pixel. Okay, my friends? It's key for you. I know this is point is very hard to understand, but I tried my best to, 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 to get you the, info, the accurate information, okay? Any questions? Okay? Okay. Let's move. Okay. Second artifact due to BB hardening is called cupping artifacts. Cubbing artifacts. Cubbing artifacts, when we scan any patients, okay, you will find that the center of patients or center of our phantom center is more thicker than peripheral. Center, okay, the dimension of the center, okay, is more thicker than the peripheral, okay, that cause beam hardening because more thickness causing absorption of low energy photons the same same idea okay so the photons which reach the center region here okay will be higher energy will be higher energy same situation okay thicker phantom thicker phantom okay and the in the center here, you will find center is more thicker than the peripheral. If we measure the thickness here, not like thickness in the peripheral, not like the thickness in 
less than the thickness in the center region, okay? So here in the center region, you'll find blackening in the center. Why? Because of beam hardening. The photons which, uh, which are incident from outside to this region, will, will, this region is more thicker to reach here. So, will cause absorption of low energy photons. So the higher energy photons will reach the center region. So will be more penetration, will be more penetratable, okay? To reach the detectors. So the detector will read it as high signal. So will be represented as black. You get my points? Same idea. Same idea of metals. Same idea. But here, not the, not the metal itself, not high density material, but high thickness material. Higher thickness material causing the absorption of <coughs> low energy photons, low intensity or low energy photons. So higher energy photons, beam hardening appear here, here again. Okay, so higher penetration of the beam. So, cause blackening of the center of the phantom. You get my points? Okay, this is called cubbing artifacts. But to overcome this problem, what will we do? We, we, every day we are doing calibration. We are using phantom. Why is this coming artifact not appear in the, our image? Because we are using pre-patient filter in the machine itself, okay, to absorb, to make the to make the beam homogeneous, to make the beam homogeneous, or using something called Bowtie filter, okay? It's corrected or calibrated, or make calibration for the detector itself to know well that in the center region the detector will, will correct the values collected in this region. Okay, we can do this. Here, okay, again, this is, you, you, in city brain you will find this pre hardening artifact. You see this one? In brain. This is due to, due, this is because of beam hardening. Why? You will find here, High density temporal bone. High density temporal bone causing beam hardening. Okay? So the intensity or the energy which is incident on this region will be high penetratable, high penetration energy. So causing blackening of this pixel. Okay? It's clear? Okay, sometimes you find beam hardening artifacts in contrast cases. Here, SCVC is injected with contrast, so high density material. Any high density material causing beam hardening artifacts. So you will find blackening here, you see? This blackening or this black strikes, this is due to high density contrast media. Okay, now we know the physics based basics of these artifacts. Okay. Uh, sometimes in bowels, uh, when we uh, when the patient drink water with contrast, okay, you will find this artifact here appear, these black strikes, okay, due to the high density material of contrast, okay, causing these artifacts, or high sometimes in high calcifications, high density calcifications, you will find around the calcification, okay, strikes, black strikes due to the beam hardening artifact, because of the beam hardening, okay? In biopsy case, this is biopsy case, this is a needle. You see this blackening? Black strikes due to beam hardening artifacts. You get my point, my friends? Okay. Okay, this is for correction, okay. Okay, here we will talk about another artifact due to or because of physics based or physics based is called partial volume artifacts. Partial volume artifacts means that that we have two different two different organs. Let me explain it to you in this
Okay. I'm sorry. I'm okay. And I draw here a material, and I draw another component. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, here, I have two components inside the patient. Okay. One is uh, fat, and another one is soft tissue. Soft tissue. Okay. And here, I have what's behind the patient, or what's under the patient is detector. This detector has a slight thickness, has a thickness. Detector width is called width. Detector width, okay? And this material or this component is very small thickness, very small thickness. So the X-ray beam coming from the X-ray tube incident on these components, okay? Now, fat and soft tissue will absorb the radiation coming out from coming from the X-ray and the transmitted photons here. Okay, will be because of the absorption of soft and fat together, not the soft only. Okay, but the detector width here, okay, is not small enough. To discriminate between the X-ray coming out from fat and soft tissue, so the detector here unable to discriminate between the X-ray, so the detector will detect the X-ray coming out from the two objects here as a one object. Okay, but. This one fat has a, has a certain attenuation, and soft tissue has another attenuation. Okay, so the signal here will be the average value of both attenuation for soft tissue and fat. Fat has a certain soft tissue, certain attenuation, and soft tissue has another attenuation. Okay, so the detector will detect the average attenuation between soft tissue and fat. That causing artifacts. It's called partial volume artifacts. Partial volume artifacts. Because the city number here will not be a real one. City number which is detected or which is calculated in this region will not be real. Okay? It's a common artifact in liver cases. It's a common artifact in liver cases. You will find lesion in lesion artifacts, or uh, sometimes you see a dark, uh, dark volume or dark region or dark objects in liver. It is not focal lesion. It is not a pathology. It is partial volume artifacts. Okay. This is the first reason of bar partial volume artifact. Second one, when you scan patients and the object you scan is outside the field of view, as you see. When you detect the city number of this object will get low city number. But if you cover the whole object, as you see here, so you will get the true city number. So you make an underestimation of the city number. That causes partial volume artifact. So, the underestimation of the city number of the object causing <coughs> this artifact, causing partial volume artifacts. Here, if the object we scan is outside the field of view, we, we have here the X-ray tube, and on the opposite side, we'll find the detector, okay? And you will take angles, different objections, many objections around the patient. But sometimes from a certain angle, you didn't see the object. Okay, the detector didn't see the object. 
here x-ray tube here in the, in the opposite direction and uh, detector in, the, in this direction but here the object is outside so that causing underestimation of the city number of this object that's causing partial volume artifacts okay here this object is outside the field is the x-ray tube and the detector in the other side and this is another angle x-ray tube and detector on the other side okay and this object will be detected by this angle partially and not detected by the other angle when we reconstruct the image that causing underestimation of the city number that causing these artifacts partial volume this black area but the real one is this that one How to minimize the partial volume artifact? Using thin <coughs> slice thickness. Thin slice thickness, you can reconstruct thin cuts of the image. So you can avoid the partial volume artifact using thin slices. Do you remember the photo distribution we talked about it? It's common artifact in shoulder region. Common artifact here in the shoulder region, you see this image, photo, this noise image photon starvation this photon starvation you remember why because shoulder region high density material causing low number of photons reaches the detectors low intensity of photons reaches the detectors so the detector unable to detect the correct the accurate city number so causing this noise it's called photon starvation okay which is white dots but it is not real white dots this region is soft tissue here but appear as white dots because the signal of soft tissue okay not reach to the detector but the signal of it's coming out from the hard density material which is bone which is the shoulder region okay causing beam hardening artifact and photon starvation artifacts causing lower intensity of radiation reach to the detector itself okay this is a photo another example of photon starvation artifact for phantom okay you will find here okay uh, sometimes we overcome the photon starvation artifacts by beam modulation or milliampere modulation by changing the milliampere around the patient moving around this is transversal modulation you remember uh, yesterday we talked about it when we move to the, this angle here we call uh, we give the higher energy or higher milliampere to the shoulder region that cause higher number of photon reach to the detector this this is a way we can overcome the photon starvation artifacts okay okay this is another example uh, for shoulder region okay after 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 causing uh, adaptive filtering sometimes we using filtration to smooth and to overcome the artifacts here the artifacts appear as this noise spikes but here after removing this artifact the curve is smooth artifacts here appear and reducing artifact with filtration okay from the higher artifact values this is photon starvation artifacts and reduced by filtration okay reduced by filtration okay now we will talk about the aliasing artifact or undersampling artifact here <coughs> okay he's called undersampling artifact or aliasing artifact sometimes we scan uh, especially for high density material or some organ we will find these stripes okay white and dark stripes that's reason what's the reason of these strikes reason is this is our patient okay and this is a x-ray tube and this is a detector okay if we want to scan the patient x-ray tube should rotate around the patient okay and the detector rotate in the opposite direction okay so we take another angle the x-ray tube will be here and the detector will be in this position and 
architecture will be in this position here okay and detector will be in this position okay so we have this angle and this one this one okay so different angles different angle around the vision so different projection okay if these angles if we remove one of these angles okay so we will take image here and we will remove this one and we take image here and we remove this one so the number of angles around the patient or number of projection around the patient not enough to get accurate image okay to get accurate image that cause under sampling artifacts or aliasing artifacts okay if the number like what if we scan patient in rotation time is more rotation time very small rotation time that calls aliasing artifacts because we can't get for enough number of views okay around the patient but if we scan patient with high rotation time or uh, a rotation time higher rotation time that calls enough number of views or enough number of projection to get the accurate image look at here here this views 500 500 projections but here 167 okay the image not like this one here 50 only 50 projection so what it's clear for you these artifacts appear this organ appear here in accurate because enough number of views or enough number of projections taken to the patient but here not enough number is only 50 so the, the higher rotation time or higher speed of rotation causing sometimes causing aliasing artifacts okay This is by patient. We will move to another uh, source. It's called. Uh, it's caused by patient is himself. Patient metal artifacts or artifacts caused by iodine contrast. You see, metal artifacts causing beam hardening artifacts. By here, iodine contrast. Sometime in this, in uh, you will find these artifacts in uh, always when we inject the patient with iodine contrast. You will find this contra these artifacts due to high density contrast causing dark strikes or black strikes and here this is dental metal and dental okay that artifact this artifact is caused by the patient himself here in the spine fixation process fixation okay you will find this spine causing these artifacts here after correction sometimes using metal artifact reduction software like here we can use it to remove these artifacts here after correction you didn't find any strikes white or black strikes you see white strikes this one and black strikes blackening around the metal itself okay uh, sometimes we adjust window level and window width to remove the artifact here's the artifacts appear and after adjustment of window level and window width, the artifacts reduced in this region. Okay? Moving from soft tissue window to bone window, reducing the artifacts of metals. Okay? This is MAR software, metal artifact reduction software, using this software to reduce the artifacts of metals. Okay? Uh, this is another artifact is called by patient motion when patient move so we will you will get a certain image at certain angle when the x-ray tube move to another angle the organ due to mo because of moving of patient the organ will be in a different position so after after detection the signal or after detection the signal coming out from the patient you will detect two different signal in two different location 
You get my point? Here, in, po in patient motion, patient motion artifact, here, the patient, okay, you will detect the signal, this is x-ray tube, and this one is detector, x-ray, and detector, and patient, okay? Now we get the image from this view, or from this angle, okay? And the x-ray tube move to another angle, okay? And the detector, but the patient here moved. Due to breathing, because of breathing, or because of the patient move himself, or uh, move his brain, or move his head. Okay, so this border change come like this. So when you detect the signal in this projection, you will find that the border here is. Look, we have two signals. Okay, in two different locations. In two different locations so when you construct when the detector reconstructs the image the border will be duplicated okay will be in two different position that's the reason why in, we see the patient as uh, we see the motion artifacts here it's clear it's very clear for us this one is after we repeat the scan patient here is stable but now you will find the borders here okay it's not real one not like this one because the patient is moving so we detect we when we localize the signal coming out from the vision we failed the, the detector failed to uh, localize the signal so they localize it in in in, in different positions so the border borders appear like this okay here as another example from motion artifacts as well you see these artifacts okay and this is another example of motion artifacts you see okay how can how can i minimize the motion artifact if you have a patient is moving during the scan you can reduce the time of scan as much as you can okay you have to reduce the time okay or to immobilize and deposition using immobilization and and positioning it to fix the patient very well okay sometimes we using software to make mesh motion correction for patient motion correction for patients okay uh, if it's necessary to use to over scan or to repeat the scan to repeat the scan of patients, okay? Okay, sometimes artifacts due to patient positioning. You position the patient not in the center of the scan, but you move the patient in uh, outside the center. That causing artifacts here. Patient positioning artifacts due to the patient, okay, causing artifacts with the border of the scan field, with the border of the scan fields. So we, it's important to both the patient in the center of the field of view. Okay? Scanner. Sometimes we have a problem in detector itself. One of detectors, we have number of row, rows of detectors. One of them, one of detectors is failed to detect the signal. Okay? So now, here, this detector, in the, this now, we detect the signal. And this detector is failed to detect the signal. Okay, we 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 uh, the detectors move around the patient, and so this detector causing uh, lost signal in this region. And when the detector becomes in another angle, the, this detector lost the signal in this region, and so on, causing this ring of artifacts. That's the reason of re the reason of ring artifacts here. Okay, one of detectors has a problem. Find you. Okay. Okay, 
spiral and slice scanning artifacts here we will talk about the in the past we used fan beam or fan beam but today we are using cone beam this cone beam means like cone like cone shape we scan the patient the x-ray beam okay incident on the patient like a cone okay this cone may causing artifact my causing artifacts how come okay let's explain for you i'm looking for the image you're presenting okay here uh, not this one okay 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 now this is our x-ray tube okay and in the past we are using fan beam or fan beam so the beam width okay is very small okay this is the beam width but for cone shape the beam width is higher okay x-ray tube we are using here okay like cone okay to be clear for you okay here this fan beam and this is cone beam this cone beam here okay we have cone angle here cone beam so if we have an object at the border of the cone beam okay if we have an object organ or something or components inside the patient okay at the border of the cone beam so this object not be detected very well not be detected very well so that causing artifacts like this one okay this is the without cone beam artifacts and this one you will find strikes here due to the cone beam artifacts because this object okay we are using here cone beam cone beams that sometimes like uh, you remember when we talked about uh, the projections if if we scan the big object and the object is outside the projection or partially detected the same it is the same concept okay partially detected that means it is not uh, not enough data will be collected by the detector okay so appear you will uh, the object will appear like this we will find play uh, strikes which is uh, which is due because of the uh, combi artifact here you see this cone beam artifacts okay appear because the object is at the border of cone beam okay uh, i think i have an image for cone beam okay not clear for me now not a bit okay no worries what this this is due to this is big this artifacts you will find lines here okay which appear in axial slice like this strikes line or black lines in the constructed image this is because of arc artifacts arc artifacts okay arc a problem in the ele electricity which supplying the x-ray uh, the x-ray machine or the ct machines okay that means that there is a problem in the electricity supplying okay the x-ray machine this arc artifact so we have to call the engineer to try to solve it you'll find this, that appear in one slice only these artifacts appear in one slice only not in all image uh, whole images but in only one slice okay multiplanar artifacts or uh, artifacts due to uh, the reconstruction you will find here strikes you see this is strikes okay this is due to uh, multi slice not enough uh, data collected by space not en enough data collected by the detector due to uh, you increase the pitch factor or increase the ta table movement okay or uh, not enough views or not or not enough under sampling not enough projections okay so you will lose this data okay 
here you see in, uh, stair step artifacts here this image for uh, multi-planary formatting you see this is trying or this artifacts it's called stair step artifacts this is due to we are using here higher thickness image higher thickness image and we reconstruct the vol uh, multi-planary formatting or sagittal slice from higher thickness image so you have to take care of this point sometimes we are using five millimeter slice thickness and we want to reconstruct coronal and sagittal image five millimeter is not enough to give you a reconstructed image in sagittal and coronal view so we have to reconstruct coronal and sagittal image from thin slices one millimeter two millimeter at maximum to get good image like this so this artifact is because of the reconstructed image okay or the or you you want to reconstruct the image from higher slice thickness not from thin slice thickness okay this is map it's called zebra artifacts zebra artifacts here you will find these artifacts this is a map image maximum intensity projection image okay after we increasing the slice thickness and we will select the maximum intensity projection image okay shows uh, zebra artifacts okay uh, that's uh, that's that's the, the reason of this noise inhomogeneity okay noise due to the name noise inhomogeneity uh, in the in the image itself okay so now if i ask you you see here five millimeters uh, section thickness you will see this lesion is away from the liver but here when we are using 1.25 millimeter slice thickness the lesion here is related to the liver okay it's near so we can see it correctly when we are using the correct slice thickness okay here what is this artifacts called which type of artifact is this one? Now you can't detect the lesion and this lesion. Now we have two objects, okay? Two objects. But the detector failed to detect it accurately because the object is very small. Small thickness. The object here has a small thickness. So the detector failed to detect the two objects as the two separate objects. So we we'll detect the signal from the two objects as a one signal. What this artifacts called? Is the name of this artifacts? Huh? You remember this one? Again, again, yes. This one? Partial volume. Okay. So, partial volume artifacts, you remember? Small thickness objects, two, two different densities of two small objects, okay, detected by the detector. But the detector width or the detector thickness, not enough to discriminate between the two different objects, okay? So we'll detect the signal coming out from the two objects as a one signal. Take the average of them. Okay, this is a partial volume artifact. Here, let's move to another example. Okay, here, what these artifacts? In the center of the phantom, dark, Huh. Do you remember the sickness, higher sickness of the phantom in the center region causing, causing what? Yes, you are right. Beam hardening artifacts. Beam hardening artifacts, okay? This is normal. Here, the metal. So, metal artifacts. Okay? This one, you remember? you remember this one number of views it's called under sampling or aliasing artifact 
under sampling or aliasing artifacts. This one, due to the arms of the patient, artifacts due to the arms of the patient, causing, yes, arms and shoulder causing what? Photon starvation artifacts, you are right. Okay, this one, metal. Okay, which one of these artifacts? This is metal artifacts. Okay, and this one? Ring artifacts, this one? Photon starvation artifacts, you are right, this one. Huh? Beam hardening? No, not beam hardening. <laughs> this one, under sampling artifacts. Not enough views to get a correct image. Is this the image of CT brain? Do you know the image? Is this is the image? Is this the right image? No, not really good. Why? Because number of views not enough to get the correct image. This one, metal artifacts. This one, photo starvation artifacts coming from the arms of the patient. And this one ring artifacts, okay? What's this one? Metal artifacts in the hip region, okay, causing this one. Okay, this is our session today finished, okay? Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? I know the topic is very hard, okay? But I hope you understand very well, okay? Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.